Hi folks, um, just make sure all the, there's nobody else to be in. Again, I'll just give it a minute or so just to admit people in if they're in the waiting room and then we'll just crack on. Again, if there's any questions you've got any time, please just stop me or put them in the chat. Uh, I, I'm hopeful that, I'm very confident that at the end we'll have maybe five, ten minutes just to talk through some stuff if you've got any more questions about anything in particular. All right, with that five or even higher. Um, and as I said before, we'll get both of these sessions up on the SAP website, okay? So, is my screen being shared, Jack? Can you all see it? Yeah. Right, okay, right, let's get cracking on. So 2H, they will, under, they will understand 2H, yeah, we're okay with, with that, just explaining why it's important to set goals, yeah? All good with that? Okay. So let's go to 2I. Right, eh, sorry, 2H either. I'm getting myself confused. 2H is when you're now describing approaches that you've used. So it's 2H1 and 2H2. Um, you basically describe one approach for factor one, then describe one approach for factor two. And it's four marks overall, two for each. Now with this one, just something to note, um, you know, with Nat5 and higher, it's not, with describing approaches, you're not describing how something's set up. So describing methods, data collection, yep, how's it set up, yep, how does it look? When describing approaches, just play the video, tell us what happened. You're only needing two things, okay? It's, it's not a lot whatsoever. So just describe how something happened in chronological order, okay? And this is good preparation for hire because they are quite tight on this at hire, okay? So it prepares them well for that. So describing approaches, as we said before, methods is for data collection, methods is for monitoring, approaches are for developing performance. So some examples of approaches, you've got visualization for mental emotional, you've got positive self-talk for mental emotional, deep breathing, mental emotional, um, team building games, role models, both of them come under social. Um, physical, you've got a whole host repetition drills, interval training, opposed practices, shadow drill, you know, you've got, you've got so many for physical, all right? So I've just got a, a number of different examples of one mark responses. So if you're doing shadow practice, an example of that would be a shadow the movement of overhead clear five times. It's a mark. Short, simple and concise. For visualisation, for say maybe improving concentration, I visualise myself scoring my free throw over and over again. Okay, and then an example of a mark in team building games for social, we reorganise ourselves in order of height without coming off the bench. So again, th there is no why there. It's just short and sharp, it's to the point. Okay. So... An incorrect response, again, I chose role models because I found them very motivating when comparing myself to an elite athlete. Again, that, that's us justifying why we use that. That's us beginning to explain. We don't need that described, okay? So again, the feedback there when they're doing their homework, etc., or when they're learning it, is just avoid the why. Sometimes what I get them to do is, when they're doing a cooperative learning task, they might be doing peer marking with one another. And I will randomly go around the room or I'll tell a kid when they come in that when they're learning this today, I want them to deliberately write the cause somewhere in their answer. I won't tell anyone else that I've picked these kids. And then when it comes to peer marking, it's about the person next to them or the person at the table, whoever they swap with, being alert enough to recognise the wrong aspect of their answer. When you're teaching this as well, folks, a good thing with Describe is a good teaching strategy in the classroom is to write the wrong answer on the board. All right? And it, it makes kids switch on, go through it. Right, what sentences get a mark? Is there any that don't get a mark? 
crucially, why why don't they get a mark? What advice would you give this pupil who's written this on the board? So writing the wrong answer is a good teaching and learning strategy for, for the pupils to see. Okay, and it, it, it makes them more aware of the pitfalls around this. Um, sometimes described as well, I'd maybe chuck a hazard sign up, okay, with the word why underneath it. Okay, so avoiding that why at all costs. So again, the tip, the marker should be able to see, again, that video plan. They should see the approach occurring step by step in their head based on the answer given. All right, easy enough, straightforward. Yeah. Right, two I. That this one here is 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 a bit of a big one. There's, I would say there's there's four key questions here that often kids do poorly in in the Nat Five portfolio. Two I is one of them. All right, and two I is is out of um, four marks. And what we're what we're wanting is kids to justify decisions they made, and it's when they're planning their PDP. So they're not carrying it out. It's when they're planning it. Now, a key thing there is, if you notice at the start of the question, in addition to the approaches you used. So in this, they're not allowed to talk about the approaches they picked. It's on top of those approaches they've used. So a lot of kids here will say, well, I decided to use the shadow drill because it was at the cognitive stage of learning. It's not answering the question. It's justify further decisions you made when planning. So a strategy they can use, and an acronym they could use, is DRI. D -R -I. Um, sentence one, give the decision. So for example, I decided to set my first session at 20 minutes for continuous training. So that's the decision they've given. Okay, sentence two, the R, reason. Give me a reason why you've decided that. Why, why are you planning this? Well, the reason for this, well, this was because I scored lowly in the bleak test. So I just wanted to make my first session realistically challenging for me. Okay. Now, a lot of kids would leave that there. They would leave it. That wouldn't get the mark because we need to know the impact that then had. So you're going beyond mere explanation where you give two sentences and we're now giving the third sentence to get the mark. All right, and that's a big reason why I think a number of kids struggle with this. So don't go further. Okay? So the impact, or well, the impact of having something that's realistically challenging, but well, this just meant that I was motivated to start my PDP as I knew I had a good chance to improve. Right, now you've got your marks. You've given me the impact that reasoning had. Sometimes we justify, I'll ask the kids to think of dominoes. As soon as you knock the first domino down for the decision, the second domino falls, and then the third domino falls. Okay, so I sometimes give them that picture to, to think about. Okay. Um, some of the things you could talk about, well, they might also talk about the principles of training. So when you're planning a physical fitness program um, and implement, you're planning it for fitness, for the physical factor, you might use the SPORT acronym. So that's principles of training, so specificity, progressive overload, reversibility, and tedium. Okay, so we can be referring to them, okay, um, when they're planning it. If it was the, if they're going down physical skills, they'd be looking at principles of effective practice, so they're looking to develop the overhead player. They're looking at VP smarter, so that's just for physical skills, that's principles of effective practice. And again, they're principles that they would follow when creating and implementing a PDP. So for that, you've got a variety, progression, specificity, measurable, achievable, realistic, time, exciting, and recorded. I'm actually quite impressed with that off the top of my head without getting confused. Okay, so... That, that's another acronym they could follow, all right? They might talk about their training partner, so they might decide to, you know, if, if you're learning the overhead play for the first time, you might decide to pick a training partner with lots of experience in badminton. Well, what's the reason for that? Well, just because they'll actually give me accurate feeds, 
when doing a repetition drill, and they'll know what makes a good overhead clear. What's the impact? <coughs> Well, the impact is that is that I'll actually get feedback as I work my way through it, which will help me improve. Okay. Location might come into it. this one here is quite important for things like mental and emotional factors like deep F approaches like deep breathing. So you might decide to do session one at home on your own to start with. What's the reason when you're doing deep breathing? So what's the reason for that? Well, the, the reason for that is because I'll have nobody judging me. I won't feel embarrassed just sitting there in a room full and my teammates doing deep breathing. Right, okay, well, what's the impact of that? Well, it means that I'll take it seriously and I'll actually concentrate on doing the approach correctly. Right, okay, good. All right, so this one here is, is a big one. It's, it's a big one because they need to get those three steps and that dry acronym needs to be there. All right, so stress that. And th th this is where... Do Doing moderation exercises can then influence your teaching and learning. All right. So this acronym is very, very important. It's four marks. It's, it's a lot because a number of kids won't even get one in this. So it's a, that, that could be, you know, that could be a grade boundary. You know, that, that could be a band. Yeah, it's different between an A1 and an A2 and so a lot of kids. All right. So an incorrect response, but I decided to train with music on to stop me getting bored. Right, well, we need more. We need more there. Well, you know, they've given a, they've kind of given a reason to stop them getting bored. What's the impact to that? That I always get them to try and write three sentences. All right, um, just because it's easier for them to follow. A little tip: set, second sentence again. This year, literacy skills coming in. You'll, you'll get bored of me talking about literacy skills, but second sentence should have because in there somewhere. That that's me teaching a lot of kids. Literacy skills in terms of, well, because means you're starting to give a reason for something. So that helps you give the reason in sentence two. And then start this third sentence for linking phrase like this meant or this led to, because that then allows you to then tie in the impact. So again, when it comes to interviews in the future, you can be talking about these things. How you develop the whole pupil, the holistic child, the, you know, the skills for life and learning. You know, not, not just PE, you're teaching skills for learning across the curriculum through PE. Okay. Does, is there any questions on that? Does, does that make sense? Because it's quite a big question. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> I'll, I'll move on. So now we go, we go to section three. So section three is where you know, so section two was looking at data collection, developing performance, planning that training program. We now go to section three where we're now monitoring and evaluating. So the next steps within the cycle of analysis. Key difference, monitoring is ongoing. We do it session to session. Evaluate happens at the end. It's when it's happened, you've got the evidence, you look back and then you make a judgment. All right. 3A, very straightforward, is looking at the feedback, explain whether the feedback you've received was useful or if it wasn't useful. And it's just two marks. So again, just give two times cause and effect. Now, the feedback here should be coming from an external source. So they should be looking at the feedback you received. So I'd, I'd, I'd be looking at feedback they maybe get from a partner, a feedback they get from the coach, a feedback from a teacher. Okay. It could be, the feedback could be, um, you know, in terms of results achieved, knowledge of results. All right. So the results that you've picked up and, and games. So was it useful? Was it not useful? Um, so example here, cause. The feedback I got from my coach was useful as they delivered it straight after my session. Right, so what comes into it again? What's the key to that? They won't unlock the mark. Well, this meant I actually understood what they were telling me because my performance was fresh in my head. Right, okay, that's a mark. And notice how, again, with, in each example, I've not mentioned it, each example, the cause and effect fits together. All right, we have some kids that will give a cause and they give a completely irrelevant effect. Just because they've, just because they've given cause and effect doesn't mean they get the mark. The key has to fit the lock. Okay. So again, just think of that when giving the feedback. Um, I think that actually comes up in the incorrect response. So my feedback was useful because my te my teacher had high knowledge levels. Okay, it's a great start, giving us the cause. But then the effect they give, 
look at the effect. This meant it was very easy to make changes to my next session. Well, that, that doesn't fit. That's not logical. All right. Just because your teacher's got high knowledge levels doesn't just make it, that doesn't make it easy to make changes. The, the correct effect to that would be that well, the, the feedback you're going to get is going to be accurate. You're going to trust it. Okay. So the cause and effect has to fit together. And it needs to make a logical sense in order to get the mark. And, and that's a key thing to know, especially even when you go up to higher where there is a lot more explained being done. Okay. So again, that's just good preparation for hire. Right, I'll move on, because I really want to spend some time at 3D and 3E. 3B, why, why do we monitor? Again, another explain, this time three marks. And this is where it is crucial to understand the difference between monitor and evaluating. Um, so, cause, I've, I've monitored my progress, because it lets me see if, my, if I was making progress in the PDP. Okay, well, so what was the effect of that? Well, this meant I got a confidence boost when I saw I was and I progressed the difficulty of my goals. All right, um, you might be talking about, how, again, notice how cause and effect fits together there. You might talk about how you, you monitor your progress because it lets you see what approaches are working. Right, okay, what's the effect of that? Well, this meant when I found the approach boring, I decided to change it for the next session. Okay. This, this question is about the ongoing nature of, of monitoring, okay? And it always leads to some sort of change occurring for the next session, all right? Or, or sticking with something for the next session. But by talking about the next session or progressing or taking regressing, something taking something back, shows that you're making adaptation on an ongoing basis, okay? And that, that's your way of showing that you understand what monitoring actually is. Again, it's about explaining why it's important to monitor, okay? Give reasons why you should monitor, all right, and the effects they then have. Okay, and again, incorrect response, you'll see it there. There is, there is no effect to that. So again, the so what? You'll find, you'll find it, guys, see when you go in your placements and you've got a National 5 class in your probation year, you will find yourself saying that, that phrase, so what, loads, all right? But the more you see it, it eventually becomes automatic. Okay. All right, to move on. Uh, 3C. 3C, very simple. Just describing your modern methods. It's, it's kind of similar to, to um, 2H. Um, in terms of it's 3C1 and 3C2. Two marks for your uh, factor one method. Two marks for the second factor method. Okay, you just need two descriptive points. Okay, now in this one, you can paint the picture, you can talk about how something looks, you can talk about how it's, you know, set up, you can do that in this, but it's very, very important that you mention something about every session, something that links into monitoring. Okay, because it is a monitoring method, so you need to have something in there around that. So if you look at the answers there, um, the training diary, training diary, I use that for every factor because you can. Um, training diary was a booklet and a page for every session. Right, there's, there's a map, that's how it looks. And we've also talked about every session. So straight away the examiner knows, the marker knows, right, this kid understands that this is an ongoing thing. It happens every session. Right, we'll play the video. Point my training diary immediately after each session by noting down how I think my session went. Okay, so that's that's what you then did. Okay, things you might talk about after that. Um, having written down how I thought it went, I decided to, to set my next steps for my next session. Yeah, that's another descriptive point in there. So again, it's short, it's sharp. There is, again, there is no justification anywhere. There is no why anywhere. Um, and, and in each example there, paint the picture and point the video, there's something about every session or each session. It shows that they understand what monitoring actually is. Now, a, a key thing here, folks, is something to notice that, and we see this sometimes, is if they do, you can do a retest where you do it at the halfway stage, well, the final stage. 
if you talk about a retest, it's very important to talk about that retest at the halfway stage. All right, because that refers to some sort of monitoring happening during the program. Might not be every session, but at least it's during. All right, because um, we often have kids talk about retesting at the end, but right? that's not monitoring. That's evaluating. All right, so the retest happening halfway through. And if they do a retest for, say, the bleep test for factor one, they can't then go and do a retest for the questionnaire in factor two because it's essentially the same monitor and method. It's a retest. Regardless of what the, the, the method is, it's, it is a retest. All right, so they're using the retest twice there. All right, so it's important that they've got different methods. Okay, so... Things that also might come up is, is coach feedback, training diary, retest. They're kind of the three that I work, I work with in. All right. Again, describe easy enough. I'll not, I'll not waste your time too much with incorrect response because it's kind of similar across the board now. Yeah. Yeah, Claire, you can only use the train diary for one factor too. So even though I'll teach it at higher, when I get to higher, sorry, I'll teach it for every factor. Um, you can only use the train diary for one factor in that five. All right, because then you're not repeating the method. All right. Yep. Right. The big one, the one that causes, this one here is, I said there was sort of four questions that cause a lot of issues. This is the biggest one. All right, it's the biggest one by far. And every year, the course report will reflect this, this question is answered poorly. So it's evaluating your PDP. So we've got that higher order thinking skill now, we're at the higher end of the, the continuum. Um, and there's, again, a strategy can fall. This time it's six marks, so it's a lot of work. All right, and that's, again, a one reason why you maybe don't access as much um, in terms of percentage of this question, because it's a lot to write. So strategy, three steps. Sentence one, give a judgment. When I teach this, I'll actually stress the word value within evaluate. So I'll say evaluate. Yeah. All right, so I use my, my communication skills there. I'll actually pause on value, okay, to stress that, to get them given a value, to give them to give a judgment in, section, in sentence one. All right. So sentence one, Team building games were an effective part of my PDP. Good. You tell me, you've given me a judgment, it was effective. Okay, it was effective or it was ineffective. It was good or it was bad. All right. It was strong, it was weak, whatever you like. Benefit, limitation, whatever you want, as long as they're a judgment. So the second sentence is, well, why is this? Give me a reason for that. Well, this is because um, team building games required no equipment and it was easy to organize. Right, okay, so that's a reason for that. But now I need the effect that they had. What is the effect that having no equipment had in the PDP? The effect must be in the PDP. It's not about performance. It's about the PDP. It's about the training program. And that's a, a big thing to distinguish. Okay? The effect is on the PDP. Right, well, with having no required, required no equipment, and it was easy to organise, well, this meant the effect of that, this resulted in us spending more time actually using the approach and developing our team dynamics. Right, they're not wasting any time putting markers out, they're not wasting any time putting benches out, they just get straight into it, they maximise their time using it, and by maximising their time actually doing the approach, they master it and improve their team dynamics. They achieve that session's goal. Okay, it links to the PDP. It does it. We're not wanting them to then talk about they're in the game and when you know Joe Bloggs missed an easy layup, I was able to support them more. That's linking to performance. It needs to link to the PDP. So answers that you could refer to, you could refer to millions of things here. All right. They could talk about the data collection methods they use. That's at the start of the PDP. Okay, they could talk about data collection methods, talk about approaches they use. Talk about the principles of training or principles of effective practice, whatever one you did. They could talk about how they designed their PDP, how many weeks was it, for example. Um, they could talk about the goals that they had. They could talk about the monitoring method they used. Okay? For example, the training diary would be a good one to talk about when you're talking about your emotional PDP. 
because only you truly know how you feel. A coach, you know, a coach doesn't know exactly if you're happy or sad. Right? You could hide that. So a training diary was an effective part of it because you could be honest and talk about exactly how you feel. And then you take it through the three steps. Okay? So you could refer to almost anything here. Um, so even though it's six marks, if you look at the things that you can refer to and consider the fact that you're not just doing one approach for your, you know, your, your number of sessions, you'll do probably two or three approaches minimum, there's, it's actually quite easy to access your six marks. But the key thing, again, is that they follow that structure of, or the strategy of judgment, reason why you, uh, you've given that judgment, and then the effect that reason then had. And it links together. Again, you can do the domino one if you want, one knocking down the other. Okay, so look at the incorrect response. My, my PDP was ineffective because my speed never improved. This meant I couldn't keep up with the man I was marking. What, what's the issue with that? There's a few, but what, what's the big issue there? Anybody wants to offer an answer? Anybody? Okay, well, if you look at it, it's, it's about the game. They're talking about performance there. All right, they're talking about not keeping up the man they were marking. Talking about their speed never improving. But what part of the PDP are you talking about? Talk about the PDP. Talk about the training program. Evaluate that. Okay? One way that I'll teach this is I'll have it through a mind map. And you just basically pick apart the PDP. Have the PDP into data collect. So mind map. PDP effectiveness, one branch, data collection methods. Right, let's branch off lots of stuff for that. Another branch, um, approaches used, branch off lots of different things. Principles of training, right, branch them all off. PDP design, branch it off. Goals, monitor method, branch it all off. And then you've actually got a page just full of graffiti notes. Okay, get them to color coordinate it. It might be that, you know the pens you get when you've got green, red, blue, in black, I'll get them to talk about the, to get them doing the judgment, I'll get them talking about the, the benefits or the effective parts in green, so they're scribbling that off in green, but they're talking about the ineffective parts or the weaknesses in the red colored pen. Okay, and that, that's a clear way for them to see judgment. All right, and it starts them off. Okay. Is, does that make sense? Because that's quite a big a big area. Yeah. Again, if you've got any questions, just put them in the chat or you can ask at the end. We should have time. All right, because we've only got two questions left here. Okay. Now, 3E is where we now evaluate the performance. All right. So that's the difference. We're now evaluating the performance. This one is only four marks. So you're looking to obviously take two from each factor. That's just the easy way of doing it. Um, again, there's three sentences. Um, this time, I will I'll ask them to go judgment, evidence, and then effect. Yeah, sorry, Claire. So for the for the six marks, I want them doing that three step strategy six times. All right, for three D. Okay, so three D. I want them doing that six times. All right. Basically, folks, that's another thing just to mention: a holistic development. Develop their ability to answer, to answer questions in an exam. So, for example, get them used to circling the number of marks available and then branching off what they, like having a plan, what they need to write. Right, well, I need, if it's six marks, well, I need that's that three-step process six times. You'd, you'd be amazed how many times a kid's, for a four-mark question, they've written two things. There's no danger they're going to get four marks there. None at all. But again, that's again something you could talk about in your interviews. That's your holistic development. They could use that strategy in history, use that strategy in biology, okay, whatever you like. They can use that strategy across the curriculum. Okay, it's, it's, it is very useful, all right? It's that developing the whole learner rather than just PE, all right? And that will really help you with things like interviews, all right? 
So on this one, I, I won't spend as long as it's fairly straightforward. Evaluate your performance of two selected factors. So three steps. Give the judgment again in sense one that value, if I evaluate. Now this one here is usually about improved or it's not improved. It's decreased or it's stayed the same or it's improved. It's usually going to be improved because they've done a program in it. All right, so if you look at physical, for example, my, my power has improved in basketball. Right, so you've given the judgment, which is a good start. Right, so the evidence needs to reflect the change. What is the improvement? Give the evidence that, well, you know, I know this is nonsense, right, but because I'm talking about slam dunks and that just doesn't happen. But this is because I now jump much higher than before when performing slam dunks and matches. Well, it's, it's evidence. That, that's, that, that, again, you can see it's a reason why. It's a reason why they've said it, if you want to do that. Okay? Um, so the evidence is they're jumping much higher than before in performance slam dunks and matches. Right? So what is the effect? Again, what is the effect? This time, the effect on performance. It's not the effect of PDP this time. It's the effect on performance. Well, this has resulted in me scoring more points for my team and we're winning more games. Right, good. Okay, that actually got three solid, three solid sentences there that reflects the evaluating of the performance. Okay, if you look at the incorrect response, my agility has improved, so it's a good start. They're giving the judgment in basketball matches, as I can now change direction more quickly in games. That's actually the evidence is okay there as well. I'd maybe want them to be a little bit more specific with that. Like the evidence will where about you changing direct you changing direction quickly is it to get away from somebody who's marking you for example again though a lot of kids won't then finish off with the effect well what's the effect of this well this means i could then get myself into space and i can receive i'm open to receive more passes from my teammates right good thing to note with evaluate as well if you notice in both 3d and 3e they're all in past tense. Okay, it's happened. You're looking back on your performance as in past tense. Okay. So a little tip this one is, is show your breadth of knowledge about a factor. And, and what I mean by that is the physical factor is the physical factor. You don't you don't need to talk about um, power twice. Uh, you need to talk about it once because that's what you've done your program in. But you can talk about any other physical factor alongside that. It's about the factor, the two selected factors. It's not about sub-factors. So you can talk about well, the improvement of my power, but they might then say, but, you know, during it, I, I, I've seen that my, um, what was it physical? I've, I've seen that my muscular endurance has, has actually got worse. <laughs> right, okay, talk me through that. All right. And that, the reason that's good is because it stops them. A lot of kids will repeat themselves. They'll say power twice and they repeat the same thing. So they're only getting one mark. Another thing with that is, in section one as well, you can't just directly flick what you've done. All right, so this power one, for example, they then can't say, well, my power's actually just stayed the same. Well, you've just told me it's improved. So that doesn't add up. All right, you can't flip what you've done. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. And with this one here, it's has to stay in the same activity. So see for section two and three, you're talking about it in one activity. Sorry, I should have said that. Section two and three is through one selected activity. Okay. Right, final question. This one is, I think, very, very simple. Um, although some kids will show it. Justify your next steps. Got five minutes left, so I'll just rattle through this. I'll just give you the strategy. Four marks. Based on your current performance, having evaluated how effective your PDP and your performance now is, what is your next steps? And justify why this is. So what you're doing is three steps. Sentence one is give an issue. But what's, what's the current issue you're facing? Well, I'm still, I've done a PDP in, in anger, but I'm still failing to control it when I make mistakes in tennis. Right, okay, so that's the issue that we're facing. Based on that, what is the action that you're going to carry out? Okay, so what is the action that you're going to, so what are you going to do to improve this? Well, see, to overcome this, I'm going to start using deep breathing during matches. Okay, good. And then finish with the effect. What effect is that then going to have? 
Well, this is just going to help me calm down and regain my focus when I go into the next point. Right, good. Okay, so it's the issue, the issue, the action, the effect. All right, the SQA have got a. Uh, you, you, when you look at the SQA guidelines, they've maybe got different letters to what I've got, but they're effectively the same thing. I just the reason I use these is because my pupils just find them, they find the language more people friendly. All right, um, just as a little tip there when you when you look at the SQA guidelines, always think how can you make those more people friendly. So when you go to hire, they'll say analyze, and it's identification, implication, impact. You know, for kids, a lot of kids that don't sit higher English, what does implication mean? Okay, it sounds daft, but a lot of them don't understand it. So you need to find ways to replace those terms to make it more people friendly. Okay. But yeah, for 3F, what is the current issue? What action are you going to do to, to, to overcome this? And what's the effect? Now, with this one, it might be that you're extending a PDP. You've, it's still a weakness. It might, or it might be that you've identified a new weakness. Okay, but you, you're wanting to go through those three steps. Okay. So that is effectively portfolio. All right, a whistle stop tour. Um, is there any? We've got just under three minutes. Is there any questions or? Anything that you want clarified, any questions at all, or even the performance element that you want to, you want information on? Yes, yeah, Sam, yeah, so th th these strategies, they, they help all the kids, to be fair, they, they help all the kids, but particularly those who don't have a high standard English, just sharing the acronyms, you know, like the three steps for justify, for example, the three steps for evaluate, we find that a lot of kids, it actually just gives them a structure to follow, all right, it gives them, it gives them a framework to work within, all right, so yeah, having that, definitely. Yeah, so Holly, with, with the, the training programme, what I do, and it's just, it's, it's trying to get the balance right between, make, I, I find that, that if, you, if you give them a choice on every factor, it becomes a bit unmanageable and it comes a bit scattered. This again is just my opinion. So what I'll do is I'll make them all do the same physical factor, but then they'll maybe make a choice between, you know, an emotional or a mental factor, just because the approach is used at mental, so like, and deep breathing could do concentration for mental, but deep breathing could also do controlling your fear for emotional. Yeah, so I give them the choice, that personalization of choice between mental and emotional, but I'll, I'll be rigid on what they're doing for physical, just so it's easy for me to take them through the course. All right. Anything? Does that answer your question? Perfect. All right. Hey, folks, we're in the final minute now. Um, like I said, I will get this recorded. It is recorded. I'll upload it to the, the website, satp.co.uk, and I think it'll come under pupil notes, um, Zoom sessions, um, and I'll have both of them up there. I'll, what I'll do is I'll email Claire the PowerPoint as well so that you could... You've got it for yourself. I'll email you some stuff as well that maybe I do with the command words. All right. But thanks for having me. Clear again. Thanks for setting up. All right.